morning. It's another fine, beautiful, sunny, hot day here in eastern North Carolina and quite breezy. So if you pick up any wind noise, again, I always apologize. I don't like hearing it in YouTube videos and I'm pretty sure most of you don't either. So today uh, I'm gonna be talking about something that not every gardener does. Maybe they don't want to, I do, <laughs> and that's labeling. Now, most of us turn around and, or I should say most, like, like, like I know what all of you out there are thinking, but a lot of us use little white plastic labels like these for whether they're, we put something in our pots or our seed trays or something along those lines. Some of us turn around and reuse the labels that the plants come with, I presume. If you don't, let me know in the comments below. Oh, uh, but real quick, before I get further into this, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, click that bell icon to be notified when I do post up a new video. Please check out all those links below. I have Amazon affiliate links, which you can go check out, try to help support the channel that way. Or if you'd like, sign up for Epidemic uh, Music. If you do, I get uh, a month for free, which would be great. But anyways, as I was saying, as I was prattling on, labeling. I think a lot of gardeners do it, and they do it for various reasons. I do it to kind of, kind of keep track of what I've planted where. For example, the beans that I have in the flower bed here. Did I say flower bed? The beans that I have in the vegetable bed. And as you can see here, I have two different types of beans, and forgive my bad, ha bad handwriting, but the one on the left is Burpee Green Pod Bush Bean, and the one on the right is Blue Lake 47 Bush Bean. So they're both varieties of bush beans, but I can tell that one isn't doing so great compared to the other. And sometimes this is where labeling comes in handy, or at least I find it handy. Over here, at the end of this bed, I have some zinnia growing. Is it zinnia? No, it's not zinnia. No, it is zinnia. See, I've forgotten, and I don't have a label here, so I have no idea what the flower is that's growing up, but I think it's zinnia. And here, at the end of this bed, I have marigold. And I know it's the red night variety, so when it comes up, the flower should be a red, maybe a darkish red, if I remember correctly. And of course, here, I have three different types of garlic, but one of them isn't like the others. So this German hardneck, German hardneck garlic, German red hardneck garlic, <laughs> uh, hasn't done anything. Um, not sure if something went wrong with the bulbs, if it was a freeze that killed the bulbs in the winter, not sure. But the two varieties, the California soft neck and the uh, Deerfield purple hard neck are both doing very well. So I'll definitely be growing them again next year. So as you can see, having a label can be a useful thing. And using these larger or smaller white labels here in the vegetable garden is fine, but I really don't like them in the rest of the garden because they're somewhat unattractive. Here in the vegetable garden, they're more practical and they're temporary. So they'll only stay in the ground basically as long as the plants and then I'll take them up. And if I reuse that, if I grow that same plant again, I'll reuse the label. Otherwise I take a piece of steel wool, clean it up and I put a new label on it. Now let me show you what I do with the rest of my plants. Now here we are at one of the two pear trees that I have in front of my house. And as you can see, this one's doing quite nicely and it is quite windy. But I don't remember what variety this is. So I can come over to this little brass tag, or copper, I should say, apologies. And, whoops, I can look at it and see, oops, apologies. Uh, I don't know if this will focus but indented into this, and again, it's difficult to see. I, I do apologize. And for some reason, the camera's not focusing. It says summer crisp pear. Now this is an indentation. So I took a ballpoint pen, pressed it into the soft copper, and that leaves a permanent indentation into the tag. So I don't have to worry about this. The color, the color of the tag may change. It may go green. It may, you know, do things over time, but it's not going, the label itself will not fade. Here's the other tree, and I don't know if you can see again the indentation, if the camera's actually focusing on that. It's difficult to tell in the viewfinder here. But it is pressed in, summer crisp pear. So now I know what variety this is.
So, as you may or may not have seen, I uh, don't know how good that footage was coming out, but I got these tags off of Amazon, and they're simply just a piece of uh, um, steel here. I'm sorry. <laughs> piece of steel that's wrapped around uh, or wrapped in this shape, and it has a copper tag on top. And what I did was, and hopefully the camera will focus, I simply put a P-Touch label on it. So what happens though, is that the whole tag itself starts to change color as copper often does, which is fine because it gives it a more earthy natural tone, but the area where the tag is stays clean and coppery. So what happens is it turns around and it sort of highlights it, which is nice. And now I'm gonna replace, I'm, let me show you what I'm gonna do next. This is not really rocket science. I just pull out the temporary tag which is just a white piece of plastic that I wrote on with a uh, Sharpie. This one, um, since I'll probably never have autumn fire sedum again, I will probably just scratch or erase this off with a piece of steel wool and reuse this tag for something else. But now I can take the nicer tag. And there you go. It's not as obvious. But if I do need to say, hey, what kind of sedum was that? I can now look down at the tag and see that it's autumn fire. And I'll simply now go around to the others. This one appeared to have been chewed on by a deer, so that will probably wind up in the recycling. And then we've got Husker. The other thing I like about these metal uh, labels too is that the steel does corrode over time, but that also acts as sort of an anchor, whereas plastic remains smooth. And heaven forbid, if we had a hurricane, then the plastic may get pulled out by the wind, whereas this metal may not. And then the pink Henry Aster. There's, there's one more type of label that I'm gonna be trying this year, and that's with my dahlias. So let me show you that now. Now the next method I'm gonna to use to label my plants is something that's new to me. Perhaps you've done something like this before. If you have, please leave a comment below. I don't know, a lot of you are watching and I, I thank you, and I thank, thank you to all the new subscribers. Huge thanks out to all of you, and if you haven't subscribed again, please subscribe, click that bell icon to be notified. As a quick side note, I'm also, if I'm not already on Odyssey, I will soon be on Odyssey. It's a YouTube alternative, so if you're not thrilled with YouTube or you just like to check out a different platform, please go over, check that out. I'll try to remember to leave the link below. If I don't, remind me. <laughs> but back to the labeling, the next method is similar to the trees. So it's a long copper tag. And again, let me see if I can get this to focus. But I put a P-Touch label on it and this is so that I can read it easier from a distance, whereas the trees I've imprinted, and that's fine because I don't always need to know what variety tree I have, or I can get up close to the tag and easily see that. In my dahlia beds, it won't be so easy. So I was watching Dahlia Holic, I believe it, the channel's called. He uh, has a similar system to this, and it's kind of where I got the idea from. So credit out to Jeff. And <laughs> uh, simply, I'm going to take the copper wire. I'm going to attach it to the uh, pole, the support pole for the dahlia. Now, the dahlias that are short, like my baby yellows or red skins, anything like that, I will use the copper tags with the stakes because they'll be more up front. They'll be towards the front of the bed, easier to see and read. The ones that are taller and that are going to be further to the back are going to be a little more difficult and I do like to keep my dahlia varieties separate and know what varieties I have. I enjoy the fact that there are so many different types of dahlias out there, and I'd like to keep them all a little, you know, keep them separate. You can, for instance, go to Lowe's or Home Depot or your local nursery and buy a bag of dahlias, and you just take the tubers and you throw them in the ground, and who knows what you're going to get. You could get all ball dahlias, you could get cactus and ball, you could get cactus ball and um, what's the other variety? There's so many different varieties. I think it's like water lily. There, again, there's so many different types. This informal, formal, you could get a mixture. 
And if that's just the way you want to grow your dahlias, that's fine. Me personally, I like to keep my dahlias separate and I like to keep them organized and appreciate the dahlia for what the, the specific type of dahlia for what it is. And again, grow my own, uh, grow the ones that I enjoy and not necessarily something that I may not enjoy. So again, picking the colors and, and the textures that I like, I'm prattling on again. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this. Now it only has one hole and theoretically I could put another hole in the bottom, but I don't know where my paper hole punch is because that would probably adequate to punch through this thin piece of copper. Either way, I left one of the uh, wire sides long. So what I will do is twist this onto the pole, cut off the excess, and use the excess to sort of wrap around the bottom. And that should hold it in place. Try to get this as tight as possible. So it doesn't slide on the pole. Like that. This could also work better on the rebar. We'll find out in a second. Let me do one of the ones on rebar. And I'm gonna to try to place these higher on the pole so that they're easier for me to see. And again, I'm getting older. So my eyes aren't what they used to be. Yet another reason for doing this. And that one's done. It definitely worked better on the rebar as opposed to the uh, plastic stakes. And I think they'll hold up fine to the wind. It's getting a little cloudy now. That's a good thing. Take some of that beating sun off my head. <laughs> Cooking the two brain cells I have left. So there you go. There are a few examples of the labeling that I do in my garden and why I do them. If you do labeling your garden and you have different if you have maybe a different decorative solution or other ideas, please leave your comments below. I like to hear them. Uh, I have looked at like slate tablets. They just didn't quite tickle my fancy as it were. Nothing wrong with them though. Uh, I've looked at a couple of other methods, but again, feel free to leave those comments below. Let me know what you think. And tell me what you guys want to see next in the garden. Again, I'm, I'm building a garden here in growing zone 8A, Eastern North Carolina. There's so much to do, so much coming up. I'm going to try to do a new style of hedge, as it were, in front of the vegetable garden this year. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, click that bell icon so you don't forget, don't miss that. Uh, I still have so much to be planting in the vegetable garden. I'm going to be planting loofah soon. I have tomatoes that uh, hopefully will be ready to go in, in the next couple of weeks. I uh, got a late start on my tomatoes. That's a whole nother story. Uh, there's, there's work to be done out towards the orchard. Although I'm going to wait for cloudy or rainy days to do that when it's a little cooler. There are hibiscus that need to be planted out. I'm going to be moving my potting bench from behind the garage out towards the greenhouse because that's sort of becoming the center focal point of the working garden as it were. And I am getting shade cloth for the greenhouse. And I'm getting it kind of long, so maybe I can use part of it as a sunshade for the potting bench area. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, again, I'm figuring all this out. I'm new to gardening. I'm just winging it as I go along. So again, if you have any comments, suggestions, or something you'd like to see on this channel, please leave a comment below. That's going to wrap it up for today. I'm going to catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.